Welcome back to the table. My name is Josh Abraham. I'm one of the pastors at Front Street, and I'm joined by Pastor Stefan. We are out here in beautiful downtown Hillsborough, and we're here to do some street preaching. We're here to bring the word of God to the people around us, <laughs> to exclaim the goodness and, you know, tell everybody to their face, get, you know, let everybody know exactly what's up. We'll just stand up here and do our preaching. This should be nice and comfortable for exactly. everyone, right? Yeah. All right. Like and here I go. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're not. No. Have you ever actually done some street preaching? Ugh. I was in a small home church that really believed that that is how you get people to come to faith. Yeah. By going up to people and accosting them in their normal lives and telling them, hey, you need to believe this because if not, the hellfire is coming straight for you. Wow. Oh, so you did that. I did. And let me tell you, I got zero people oh, to man. interact with me in a positive way. I remember uh, on my alma mater, my campus, Auburn University, uh, is uh, right outside the library is one of our main bus stops. And I was held captive quite a number of times waiting on a bus. And of course, that's where the street preacher would go. Mm -hmm. He'd set up right there while everyone's waiting on the bus and start reading scripture, uh, preaching something, maybe fire and brimstone. Yeah, it was a bit obtrusive. Yeah, they're never, never good. And I'm sure that there are people who are watching this now that as soon as I said, we're going to do some street preaching, immediately pulled away and you're like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> you think it was when you mentioned it or was it when I stood on top of the wall? Probably some combination of all of uh -huh. it. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the uh, vows of the Methodist Church, us as members, disciples rather, moving forward through prayers, presence, gifts, service, and then we get to this last one, which is our conversation today on witness, and you start to think, that one's really a lot more personal than I might feel comfortable with. Right. And I think for most people, the only witness that they have examples for in their life is that kind of crazy street the preaching. Street preacher. Or somebody who... Jehovah's Witness knock on the door, yeah, right? Somebody whose social graces and social boundaries are not exactly stellar. Oh, yeah. And the person that stops you maybe at the grocery store and they've got a track mm -hmm. that they're trying to give you. And I, I wonder if people, yeah, they feel as though some of that witness feels a bit like accosting other people. Either you've been accosted by someone else or you feel as though any type of interaction about witness to your faith to another person, especially if you don't know them, mm -hmm. that it might feel like that to the other person. Right. Jesus wasn't that person who just walked up and started accosting people on the street. Right. There was a, a method to his madness, if you will. In fact, any time that we see Jesus offering healing or forgiveness or love or grace to another person in the Bible, how often does Jesus ask if they believe or if they understand some certain tradition or if they follow some pattern of life. Mm -hmm. Very few times, yeah. in fact, next to none. Right. Jesus is really ready to offer that healing and that grace and that love first and foremost. Right. Starts from that deep place of relationship. Yeah, that first element that Jesus gives is that connection. And then he moves into the deeper understandings and the deeper truths. I think one of the biggest issues is maybe just not knowing what to say and not knowing, should I just jump right into it? Should I do X and Y and Z? Should I just start, you know, telling people, hey, Jesus loves you or something yeah. like that. What's the, they I think people want that kind of step-by-step -step process. Yeah. And they want people to feel comfortable. Right. So they either err on, well, I'll either say too much or say nothing at all because either one of them is better than just, you know, saying something wrong. Yeah. When realistically, that's not a problem because all we're supposed to do is to connect with people first, yeah. foremost, and only. And then our witness will follow. That's what Matthew 8 uh, tells us, to shine and so that people can see what God is doing. I think for probably the majority of people, okay, we have a little bit of confidence. We want to talk about Jesus in the world. We want to talk about our faith. Uh, we, we have an understanding that this is what I'm called to, is to share this witness of faith with other people. But I think the next hurdle that we might fall into, maybe this is the last one, is we feel as though we're going to start the conversation. Okay, 
But if someone comes back and asks me a question that I don't know, or they ask me a question about a Bible verse that I've not read or don't have memorized or can't regurgitate off the top of my, my tongue, well then, I started it. I feel like I should finish it. Mm -hmm. But I may not have all the answers to what other people are asking. That's right. And I think that's a big struggle for a lot of people. Yeah. We might not be the person that, uh, to use Bible language, harvests yeah. something. We might just be planting seeds and getting that conversation started. Yes. So, and this is where I want to name just a couple of truths about witnesses for us in general. So, first of all, it doesn't even matter if you're witnessing about faith. If you're coming at somebody with a new conversation uh, that you feel nervous about, you're mm -hmm. nervous about having this conversation, you're nervous about talking about this thing, chances are, very strong chances are, that that other person is just as nervous as you are mm -hmm. and feels as though it's just as awkward as you are. Right. So for you to relax and be in a place of humility to understand that both of you are very likely coming from a place where it is a new conversation. It's a new thing to talk about. Yeah. So let yourself wash over with that understanding of you're both, you're both in this mess together. Exactly. You're both trying to figure it out together. Yeah, there's a camaraderie there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good place to say that our faith, it is a, a personal thing, right? It's personal to us as individuals, our relationship with Jesus Christ, and very much so, our faith is not private, mm -hmm. which means it's not something that's supposed to be held up just within us. It is something that we participate on Sunday morning in a corporate sense. It's something that we practice uh, on a regular basis outside of our own selves. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be something that is personal because everything that Jesus did was personal, but it was also very much so public. Very public, very public. Everything from him preaching to him dying on the cross uh -huh. was something that people witnessed and people had to interact with, yeah. whether they wanted to or not. Yeah. So there has to be that element where we have to assume some of that responsibility when it comes to being corporate about the things that are important to us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and then the other thing that I wanna say about witness is witness really doesn't start with you. No, or me not. Or us. Witness by its definition, the first thing that you have to do in order to tell people about what you saw, you have to have seen it. Mm -hmm. You have to have witnessed it. You have to have been the person that, that watched it happen. And so I very much so hope that for our, our listeners and, and for you and me, that that looks like us witnessing the love of Jesus Christ in our individual lives, mm -hmm. that we have seen it, we have watched it, we have been a part of it, we have participated in it. Mm -hmm. We have soaked it in, taken it in within ourselves. And then the second part of that witness then becomes turning and sharing that story with others. Right. That, it's, it's that kind of flow of information. It doesn't start with you. It starts outside of you and comes through you to be shared with someone else. Yeah. And that sounds incredibly natural to me because anybody can share good news of stuff that's happened to them, whether they had a great day at work or yeah. they ate an amazing sandwich or they did something or something happened to them that was incredible. The yes. first thing they say is, I cannot wait to share this great thing that's happened to you. And so what if we looked at our faith more like that? Like, yeah. this amazing thing has happened, not just to me, but to the universe. Well, wait, back up a second, because what you said is so incredibly important that we witness to things all day long, mm -hmm. all throughout our lives. In fact, I'm witnessing to something right now. I have seen something good in my life and I am sharing it with the people that are watching this video. I'm a graduate of Auburn University. Oh, did you go I'm an alum, so I'm wearing the shirt and I've got my hat on. I am witnessing to you of the good time that I had at this college. It was a fantastic time. And so here I am repping the merchandise. Uh, thank you for Jay for buying. He went out of his way. He went all the way to Auburn, Alabama to buy this shirt wow, for me. That is the case. good friends. And so here I am witnessing to something I have seen sharing that good thing with you. Other things that we witness and we share with other people, I mean, football, uh, whatever hobbies you might have. During the summertime, we are all witnessing to the heat that's around us right mm. now. It's so hot. It we is. Part of the witness to the world of that. Summer's a great time because everyone is engaging in social activities already. We're going to pools, we're going to baseball games, we're going on vacation, yeah. we're doing all these things, not just by ourselves, we're outside enjoying that beautiful weather, even though it's a little hot. So, it should be a natural transition just to be able to share those good things with other people. Yeah. Invite people over to your house for a barbecue. Go to the pool with someone. Enjoy those baseball games with other people. Yeah. And, Going on a walk. Yeah. 
Absolutely. In, in you, nature and you're witnessing the creation that's around you and just call attention to it. Exactly. And I think that's one of the things that once you get to that comfortable place, you set yourself up in that scenario that seems to work well. Well, then the next part is, what do I say? Mm -hmm. How do I start that conversation? How do I start that dialogue? And, and maybe we get tied up there. I love what Jay was telling us a little while ago when we were planning for this, this video. And he said that he had a friend that so naturally talks about how he sees God work in the world. And where he might be having a conversation with someone like you and I are. And then off on the side, he sees something that happens. He sees a bird that flies by. He sees uh, somebody that's being nice uh, to a homeless person that's in need. And, and he points to that over there and says, you know, that reminds me of this moment with Jesus, mm -hmm. where Jesus did something similar. He took Jesus and rather than what it often feels like to us is, as the witnesser, we're supposed to have the Jesus and then bring it here, right? Right. And that feels so daunting. Mm -hmm. But if we were to walk up and have this relationship with somebody and then to say, do you see that Jesus happening over there? Mm -hmm. Do you see that faith walk being uh, performed right over there across from us? Mm -hmm. How natural does that feel? How much easier does that seem? Mm -hmm. And how does that bring the world into witness and yeah. bring the things around us into witness, even if they don't realize that that's what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the last thing about witness is just like anything else, we have to practice it. It's always going to be awkward the first time. It's always going to be awkward the first maybe even hundred times. But just like us, you kind of have to just walk the walk for a little bit. Exactly. To try out some different things, to, uh, uh, to give it a shot. And even though if it doesn't work the first time and loosen up that definition of work, maybe, is to say, you know what? Let me try something different next time. Mm -hmm. Let me try a different place in person. Let me try a different place. Let me try a, a, a different strategy. Maybe there's a different story that comes up and you just want to text this to somebody. Even those times when you don't feel like your witness was strong, if you start with kindness, yeah. you start with caring for other people, you already started on the best track you possibly could. Yeah, yeah. Because our job, like you said, isn't to be the Jesus in this universe. We're just bearing witness to what Jesus has already done. Yeah. And so if we start with that kindness, we've started already great. So it can give us that little wiggle room and that grace when, yeah, we might be belligerent at times. We might mess up. We might accidentally offend somebody. Yeah. But if we start with kindness, we can't do wrong. Absolutely. Kindness, I'm going to say for the end of our video here today, is that kindness might just be the street corner that you need to step on first. Mm -hmm. So there it is. I hope that you have a wonderful time as you work through this practice of witness because it's something that all of us as Christians are called to do. We are called to work forward more and more into this deeper relationship with God, into a deeper relationship as a disciple of Jesus Christ with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service. We're getting a little closer to home and then we're bringing it all the way at witness the faith that Jesus has been a part of our lives all along. Uh, and with that, we'll send you off to practice witness in this week. We'll see you next time. Take care. When it shines a light, whenever God shines his light on you, on you. have this uh, study guide that goes along with our at the table videos called at your table and this at your table guide you get a text message to your phone and you get to scroll through and find all sorts of questions to answer uh, to talk about amongst yourselves or your family uh, maybe you want to talk with your spouse about these questions or maybe a small group or meet some friends for coffee sometime and you can watch the at the table video together you can answer some of these questions there's some fun yeah, icebreakers you can, It'd be a great thing if you have teenage kids, middle school kids. Yeah. Say, hey, for 15 minutes, we're going to watch this. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a commercial break. Let's pause. So it's a lot of fun, and we'd love for you to be a part of it.